This video I'm going to show you our uh, SA3230. This particular mill uh, is a 32-inch uh, span mill. Uh, we will say that it solves a 30-inch log diameter. It is a 30-horsepower Kohler engine. It, it does have a hydraulic system on it. As standard, the hydraulic system raises the head, lowers the head. It has two speeds in the up and down, and, uh, and it has the forward and reverse. And this particular model today that we're going to show you, we have the optional log loader on it. And uh, everything else from there, the manual clamps, the manual squaring arms uh, are on the mill. This mill has uh, steel wheels. They're 19 inch, they're ground true. It has the all adjustable roller guides that, that, we, uh, that we put on all of our mills. And uh, it's just an easy to maintain mill. It has the tensioning hinge like we up put on our big mills and uh, that, that has a, a hinge system that allows us to float with a spring so we can maintain tension on that blade. Remembering that blades are spring steel and so springs have to be able to stretch and contract. So when you use a spring tension system with a spring steel that is cutting wood, then we have the perfect case for the blade to be taken care of. One of the things that we key on in cook saw is that we always want to take care of the blade. If we take care of the blade, the blade will take care of you and you'll get a lot of, lot of uh, use and a lot of wood cut. On this mill, I think it's important to note that we pull this head, you'll see the chains on both sides of the head so that we, we pull the head forward uniformly and we pull the head back uniformly. And uh, that's important for saw blades. Saw blades don't need to be seesawing in the cut and they need to be stable. You'll also notice it's a four post head it is a very stable head. It is very stable. You can't come to this mill and, and lift that head up and down and shake it. So in the cut, it also is not rising up and down, as you will see with the cantilevered heads. Uh, the guide in and out uh, moves manually. We'll loosen the T-handle here, and we can move that in and out. Uh, it is important to note on these type mills, when we build them with manual squaring arms, and manual clamps, we will lock the log on the left-hand side. That puts our movable guide on the operator side. And, uh, and when we get a log square, we don't have to keep clamping it. You'll notice that we don't have to clamp it every time, that we can saw through the lumber just because it sets and it's pushing that away. Now the difference being, when we go to hydraulic squaring arms, and hydraulic clamps, we'll put the squaring arms on this side like we do on all of our hydraulic mills and the log will clamp over here and the movable guide then goes to the other side. And of course with hydraulic mills, when you make that hydraulic guide movable and you make hydraulic clamps, it just makes things faster and easier. So it is, you know, there's a little difficulty in manuals. You got to go around, and move the squaring arms. And so you need to be aware of these things when you're, when you're looking at purchasing one of these mills. This mill will cut really good, and I'm impressed with the way that it saws with the inch and a quarter blade, and we'll show you just that. Uh, we're gonna be sawing today southern yellow pine. It's a fairly easy wood to saw with the exception of where the knots are. The knots in the southern yellow pine are very hard, and they're very dense, and they're very full of pitch, and so the, uh, the, the southern yellow pine in this log, you'll see the bark slipping on it, so it's been down for about eight or nine weeks, something like that. So it's become a little bit harder to saw than it would have been if it was gourd green. But we'll fire up the mill and show you how this operates.